Book Two, The Book of the Traveler of the World. Canto One, The World Stare. Alone he moved, watched by the infinity around him and the unknowable above. All could be seen that shuns the mortal eye. All could be known the mind has never grasped. All could be done, no mortal will can dare. A limitless movement filled a limitless peace. In a profound existence beyond earth's parent or kin to our ideas and dreams, where space is a vast experiment of the soul in an immaterial substance linked to ours, in a deep oneness of all things that are, the universe of the unknown arose. A self-creation without end or pause revealed the grandeurs of the infinite. It flung into the hazards of its play a million moods, a myriad energies, the world shapes that are fancies of its truth and the formulas of the freedom of its force. It poured into the ever stable flux a bacchic rapture and revel of ideas, a passion and motion of everlastingness. There rose unborn into the unchanging surge thoughts that abide in their deathless consequence, words that immortal last though fallen mute, acts that brought out from silence its dumb sense, lines that convey the inexpressible. The eternal stillness saw in unmoved joy his universal power at work display in plots of pain and dramas of delight the wonder and beauty of her will to be. All even pain was the soul's pleasure here. Here all experience was a single plan, the thousandfold expression of the One. All came at once into his single view. Nothing escaped his vast intuitive sight. Nothing drew near he could not feel as kin. He was one spirit with that immensity. Images in a supernal consciousness, embodying the unborn who never dies, the structured visions of the cosmic self, alive with the touch of being's eternity, looked at him like form-bound spiritual thoughts, figuring the movements of the ineffable. Aspects of being donned world outline, forms that opened moving doors on things divine, became familiar to his hourly sight. The symbols of the spirit's reality, the living bodies of the bodiless, grew near to him, his daily associates. The exhaustless seeings of the unsleeping mind, letterings of its contact with the invisible, surrounded him with countless pointing signs. The voices of a thousand realms of life missioned to him her mighty messages. The heaven hints that invade our earthly lives, the dire imaginations dreamed by hell, which if enacted and experienced here, our dulled capacity soon would cease to feel, or our mortal frailty could not long endure, were set in their sublime proportions there.
they lived out in their self-born atmosphere they resumed their topless bitch and native power their fortifying stress upon the soul bit deep into the ground of consciousness the passion and purity of their extremes the absoluteness of their single cry and the sovereign sweetness or violent poetry of that beautiful or terrible delight all thought can know or widest sight perceive and all that thought and sight can never know all things occult and rare remote and strange were near to heart's contact felt by spirit sense asking for entry at his nature's gates they crowded the widened spaces of his mind his self discoveries flaming witnesses offering their marvel and their multitude these now became new portions of himself the figures of his spirit's greater life the moving scenery of his large time walk or the embroidered tissue of his sense these took the place of intimate human things and moved as close companions of his thoughts or were his soul's natural environment tireless the heart's adventure of delight endless the kingdoms of the spirit's bliss unnumbered tones struck from one harmony's strings each to its wide-winged universal poise its fathomless feeling of the all in one brought notes of some perfection yet unseen its single retreat into truth secrecies its happy sidelight on the infinite all was found there the unique has dreamed and made tinging with ceaseless rapture and surprise and an opulent beauty of passionate difference the recurring beat that moments god in time only was missing the soul timeless word that carries eternity in its lonely sound the idea self luminous key to all ideas the integer of the spirit's perfect sum that equates the unequal all to the equal one the single sign interpreting every sign the absolute index to the absolute there walled a path by its own innerness in a mystical barrage of dynamic light he saw alone immense high curved world pile erect like a mountain chariot of the gods motionless under an inscrutable sky as if from matter's splints and viewless bays to a top as viewless a carved sea of worlds climbing with foam maned waves to the supreme ascended towards breaths immeasurable it hoped to soar into the ineffable's reign a hundred levels raised it to the unknown so it towered up to heights intangible and disappeared in the hushed conscious vast as climbs a story temple tower to heaven built by the aspiring soul of man to live near to his dream of the invisible infinity calls to it as it dreams and climbs its spire touches the apex of the world mounting into great voiceless stillnesses it marries the earth 
to screen eternities. Amid the many systems of the one, made for an interpreting creative joy, alone it points us to our journey back out of our long self-loss in nature's deeps. Planted on earth, it holds in it all realms. It is a brief compendium of the vast. This was the single stair to being's goal, a summary of the stages of the spirit, its copy of the cosmic hierarchies, refashioned in our secret air of self, a subtle pattern of the universe. It is within, below, without, above. Acting upon this visible nature scheme, it wakens our earth matter's heavy dose to think and feel and to react to joy. It models in us our diviner parts, lifts mortal mind into a greater air, makes yearn this life of flesh to intangible aims, links the body's death with immortality's call. Out of the swoon of the inconscience, it labors towards a superconscient light. If earth were all, and this were not in her, thought could not be, nor life delights response. Only material forms could then be her guests, driven by an inanimate world force. Earth, by this golden superfluity, bore thinking man, and more than man shall bear. This higher scheme of being is our cause, and holds the key to our ascending fate. It calls out of a dense mortality the conscious spirit nursed in matter's house, the living symbol of these conscious planes, its influences and goddess of the unseen, its unthought logic of reality's acts arisen from the unspoken truth in things have fixed our inner life's slow scale degrees. It steps off paces of the soul's return from the deep adventure of material birth, a ladder of delivering ascent and rungs that nature climbs to deity. Once in the vigil of a deathless gaze, these grades had marked her giant downward plunge, the wide and prone leap of a goddess fall. Our life is a holocaust of the Supreme, the Great World Mother, by her sacrifice, has made her soul the body of her state. Accepting sorrow and unconsciousness, divinity's lapse from its own splendors wove the many patterned ground of all we are. An idol of self is our mortality. Our earth is a fragment and a residue. Her power is packed with the stuff of greater worlds and steeped in their color lusters dimmed by her drowse. An atavism of higher births is hers. Her sleep is stirred by their buried memories, recalling the lost spheres from which they fell. Unsatisfied forces in her bosom move, they are partners of her greater growing fate and her return to immortality. They consent to share her doom of birth and death, 
they kindle partial gleams of the all and drive her blind laborious spirit to compose a meagre image of the mighty whole. The calm and luminous intimacy within approves her work and guides the unseeing power. His vast design accepts a puny start. An attempt, a drawing half done, is the world's life. Its lines doubt their concealed significance. Its curves join not their high intended close. Yet some first image of greatness trembles there, and when the ambiguous crowded parts have met, the many-toned unity to which they moved, the artist's joy shall laugh at reason's rule. The divine intention suddenly shall be seen, the end vindicate intuition's sure technique. A graph shall be of many meeting worlds, a cube and union crystal of the gods. A mind shall think behind nature's mindless mask, a conscious vast fill the old dumb brute space. This faint and fluid sketch of soul called man shall stand out on the background of long time, a glowing epitome of eternity. A little point reveal the infinitude. A mystery's process is the universe. At first was laid a strange anomalous base, a void, a cipher of some secret hole where zero held infinity in its sum and all and nothing were a single term, an eternal negative, a matrix naught. Into its forms the child is ever born, who lives forever in the vasts of God. A slow reversal's movement then took place. A gas belched out from some invisible fire. Of its dense rings were formed these million stars. Upon earth's newborn soil, God's dread was heard. Across the thick smoke of earth's ignorance, the mind began to see and look at forms and groped for knowledge in the nation night. Caught in a blind stone grip, force worked its plan and made in sleep this huge mechanical world that matter might grow conscious of its soul and like a busy midwife the life power deliver the zero carrier of the all. Because eternal eyes turned on earth's gulfs, the lucent clarity of a pure regard, and saw a shadow of the unknowable mirrored in the inconscious boundless sleep, creation's search for self began its stir. A spirit dreamed in the crude cosmic world. Mind flowed unknowing in the sap of life, and matter's breasts suckled the divine idea. A miracle of the absolute was born. Infinity put on a finite soul. All ocean lived Within a wandering drop, a time-made body housed the limitable. To live this mystery out, our souls came here. A seer within, who knows the ordered plan, concealed behind our momentary steps, inspires our ascent to viewless heights as once the abysmal leap 
to earth and life. His call had reached the traveler in time, apart in an unfathomed loneliness. He traveled in his mute and single strength, bearing the burden of the world's desire. A formless stillness called a nameless light. Above him was the white immobile ray, around him the eternal silences. No term was fixed to the high-pitched attempt. World after world disclosed its guarded power. Heaven after heaven its deep beatitudes, but still the invisible magnet drew his soul. A figure soul on nature's giant stair, he mounted towards an indiscernible end on the bare summit of created things.